Now, speaking of people who don't have a good story to tell, I have to comment on a guy named Cenk Iger. Okay, you may not know about Cenk Iger. Cenk is a guy who runs something called the Young Turks. And I've debated Cenk Iger on everything from healthcare policy to mostly healthcare policy. But uh, Cenk uh, is, is a very hardcore leftist and he's very upset. Why is he upset? Well, he's upset with Tucker Carlson because Tucker Carlson said the other day that adult film stars are indecent, which seems to me definitional. Like that's literally their job is to be indecent. Their literal job is to take off their clothes and have sex with people for money on camera. So I'm not seeing the decent part of that. Tucker Carlson said it was indecent for Democrats to portray Stormy Daniels as a heroine when she had a one night stand with a married man and got paid 130 grand to shut up about it and then decided to become a political figure. I don't think Tucker Carlson's wrong about that. Does that make Trump's behavior with Stormy Daniels decent? No, but let's not pretend that Stormy Daniels is the great hero of feminism. In any case, Chank is very upset. So Chank tweeted out, I'm not done yet. Tucker Carlson says that adult film stars are indecent. Really? How many adult films do you think Tucker has watched in his life? In the thousands, at least. Is he claiming he has never watched any? Same with Ben Shapiro, who writes an anti-porn book. Please. Okay, I have a few comments on this. First of all, real weird that Chank is sitting around thinking about how much porn I watch. Very, very weird. I don't know what he fantasizes about in his spare time, but I'm a little creeped out. I was just sitting here doing nothing, and suddenly I'm being attacked by Chank Iger with the suggestion that I watch porn. I did write a book about why pornography is bad, because pornography is bad. Like, it's, it's not decent. It's immoral. Okay. Now, I, I'm also confused by the, this idea that Tucker Carlson is not allowed to say that porn is indecent if he has ever seen any porn at all. This is like saying that you think drug use is indecent, if you, but if you've ever used drugs, you can't say that. Like, I'm, I'm super confused by this argument, but it's an argument frequently used on the left. I will also say that uh, the only pornography I need is the film of Cenk Iger mourning the election loss. Like, that's the only pornography I need is actually just Cenk sitting there weeping over the election loss the night of the election because it's so, it's so good. It's still hilarious. Uh, so well done, Cenk, really doing credit to, to the agenda of the left by talking about Republicans watching pornography. Okay, speaking of party who tell you to neuter yourself and be fucking polite, okay? No, no. The, the progressives are, we're not going to be polite anymore. You know what we're going to do? Something that the DNC has cock-blocked this entire fucking time? We're going to fight back. The era of politeness for the progressives is over. When it comes to poor white people, I'm going to quote my friend Matt Kazam and say, look, I got my own problem. Yeah. You know, I can't be, I mean, this is, they're, they're the group Can you that, think about me for one minute? No, you're on your own. <laughs> they, um, they are the people who I've said continuously, they get what they deserve. Hey, look, man, you, you got to give us power, man, because without money, we don't have power. Let's just keep it real. So if, if, let, let's go on a barn burner tour through, through the red states, man. Let's go talk to them. Let's wake them up. Hey, hey, uh, and in whatever language they uh, understand, and you want to you want to get in the beginning, want to be a, be a little rough uh, verbally, right? And and get them a little angry. They'll, they'll show up to a rally. They'll show up, right? And the brakes are off now, okay? So like, hey, you know, I, before I'm worried about asking you guys for to become members and get independent media. Then I'm not worried about it at all anymore. You got to join. If you don't join, how can we fight back? Back. Founders were slave owners who died when they were 40. Like, they're being, not, they, weren't so, they weren't such geniuses. Yeah. And in four years, <laughs> when we uh, uh, hopefully beat her with, uh, beat him with I don't know who, maybe Hillary Clinton could run again. Um, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's her turn. It's her turn. <laughs> um, the, uh, <laughs> and so, um, Shoot, I actually lost a train of thought for the first time in 12 hours. You're not going you you to be polite, and uh, Democrats are uh, weak. <laughs> <laughs> Does that help? Not every Trump supporter is a racist, but every racist is a Trump supporter. That's right. So here's the ones that are left undecided. Okay, right now, as we stand in the Electoral College, it's 244 to Trump and 215 to Hillary Clinton. So the ones that are left are New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Arizona. So out of those... Five, she has to win four, okay? We broke the New York Times needle. It's just stuck at 95%. I think they felt embarrassed to go to 99% before they call it. Um, it's uh, not going to happen. Look, I got to say it. I, I think that we're at the Young Turks on, a, on nights like this, on election nights, we're pretty damn good at this. 
There's, there's, two, there's two components. There's two components to the fight back. There's the media. That's us. Okay. So who's it going to be? BuzzFeed? Okay. No offense, BuzzFeed. But go play fun games with watermelons. Okay. It's not going to be them. They did some okay. good investigative journalism. Is it, it, <laughs> yeah. They okay. actually have. <laughs> okay. Bless their hearts. That, that's, a, that's cute. That's cute. They're, they're political okay. news side is That's super cute. Side. That's super cute. And to the motherfuckers on Twitter fucking me, with me right now, I just want you to know. I don't give a fuck. I'm ready for the revolution. <laughs> you got me fucked up. I'm not that bitch. For what right wingers love to talk about. Take personal responsibility. No, here's the thing. Um, affirmative action is not the reason why you failed in life. Uh, uh, the reason why you failed in life is because you fucking suck. Okay? Because yeah. you're a loser. <laughs> white folks think, oh my god, if we just get rid of folks. And whenever I say white folks in this country, you know I mean white wingers, right? One corner of this paper is uh, the Dakota Pipeline, the other one is Keystone, this one is TPP, <laughs> and this one is your corporate tax cuts. Okay? <laughs> so, yeah, good luck with that shit, okay? Uh, we're not doing that. Okay, here's the list of corporate donors. Okay? This is what the Democratic Party do is going to do with corporate donors from now. Now, she's losing Pennsylvania, and it's 98% reporting. And he's got a 0.8% lead. So, John, uh, go ahead. Is, uh, Updates? What is, yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania was called for Donald Trump. It's over. Okay. It's over. Uh, so, uh, there you go. Donald Trump, next president of the United States of America. She's up in New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, have they called, have the national organizations called the I election? I haven't seen it. I mean, he Not won yet. Pennsylvania. What the fuck are you guys waiting for? It's over. It's uh, Alaska could swing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's over. Okay. Um, so, uh, Trump's empty podium is back. Well, now well deserved. We can have massive growth from here to eternity. Because well, let me just ask, since we're talking about taxes, do you think we'll see tax reform in the, in the next few months here? Okay. So let me try to address all that in your, in your question as well. So just real quick. Look, guys, I, I said it however many questions ago. Of course you have to have, find the right balance on all of these issues, including taxes. So I never said uh, there's no end to how much you can I'm, I'm just asking pay. why, though. Yeah, so, so the, the, this leads to, no, wait a minute. This leads to big government versus small government. I'm tell, you're asking me what the ideal tax rate is, and then you did a straw man there for a second and said it should be 100%. I never said that. No. I, In fact, I said. No, you said, you said the economy. You said the economy grew faster when the top marginal tax rate was 91%. So I'm asking you, why shouldn't the top tax rate or all tax rates be 91%? You seem to be identifying a higher rate of growth with higher taxation. So I'm asking you, yeah. on principle, you okay, keep talking now, about the glories of a mixed economy. So now tell me about the glories of capital. I've heard about the glories of high tax rates. I've heard about the glories of government-provided health care. Now tell me some of the glories of, of actual capitalism, which is the basis for all the things you're talking. Tell me why it's good. Right. So now, look. When, 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 when you, s I use the example of the 91% and the 70% to give you a sense of that I was surprised and you'd be surprised to find out that our economy was booming in those times. That's not to say that that is the right tax rate for us today. And so the exercise of finding the right tax rate is, guys, try to follow along, okay? It's called logic. So it would be preposterous to set the tax rate at zero. When you have lower taxes, ironically, the economy does worse. But of course, it's a balancing act. Okay, so uh, th now you're making a strong case for Keynesian economics, which is totally fine. Obviously, uh, the the problem with Keynesian economics is that it doesn't even work in theory because, again, once you go to the logical extreme, which is remove all of the money from the rich people who are saving all their money and give it to all the poor people to buy hamburgers, that doesn't help the economy or spur the economy. What spurs the economy is a higher level... Right. What spurs the economy is the creation of new products and services, and that is only going to be done by people who have exp expendable capital to actually invest in the new products and services that we all enjoy. This is what creates economic growth. It's also worth noting that this, this myth that spending is inherently better for an economy than saving, that's only true if you're talking about somebody's actually taking the cash and just shoving it into their mattress. Banks are in the business of lending. 
When they take the money in, they don't just stick it in Al Gore's fake loan money from either from anyone. Neither have you. And the idea that money has to be forcibly taken from you and handed to somebody at the bottom end of the economic spectrum to somehow jog the economy that may jog McDonald's, but is not going to jog all of the creation of the products and services that make all of our lives much better today than they were 30 years ago in terms of the stuff we have access to. So, and finally, as far as the idea that Republicans pass tax cuts because they're beholden to their donors, okay, and Democrats pass tax increases because the unions give them hundreds of millions of dollars every year, and I don't see Democrats complain about this. Um, so, you got me there. The unions give money to the Democrats. Um, so, am I... Am Are you I angry gonna, about am, that? I mean, does it upset you as much as, you know, bankers giving money to Republicans? No, no, cor the corporations give... Way more than the unions. Uh, so it's been much corporations. That's, okay. That's not That's really okay. true. okay. Look it up. You can Google it. It's really easy. But let's not forget that Republicans do the same and worse. Who was the one who came up with the Southern strategy? That was the Republican Party. And the Southern strategy was let's go get racist white voters in the South. That's a fact. So, once again, it's this wonderful capitalist invention called Google. Google it. So, two, two Republican chairmen have said, yes, we did do that strategy, and we apologize. So that's a fact. They're the ones who invented identity politics. So, when you, you like identity politics when it serves your interests, but all of a sudden, when we say, hey, can black people have the same rights as white people? Oh, identity politics. Can gay people have the same rights as straight people? Identity politics. It's called equality. Look into it. It's called America.